Good morning. I'm Ray Roberts. I'm the pastor of River Road Presbyterian Church. And on behalf of the congregation here at River Road Presbyterian Church, we are so glad that you've joined us this morning. Welcome. Welcome. Bruce Springsteen once uh, sang a song about the human condition. Actually, sang a lot of songs about the human condition because that's what makes him a great songwriter and poet. Uh, but he sang that song, Everybody Has a Hungry Heart. And that's true. We are a bundle of hungers and desires. There is an emptiness, a craving in each one of us. Uh, we don't want to, as the Snickers ad says, uh, go around hungry. We're always looking for something to satisfy us. You know, I once knew a church member who tried to stop smoking, <clears throat> and he said the hardest part, of course, was handling the craving. And he said, I, I'm trying to remember that I don't really want a cigarette because that will just lead to another cigarette, and my craving is really spiritual. And I, I started to say, you know, something to the effect that, you know, nicotine is, uh, addiction is not quite the same as spiritual craving, but he said it was helping him to think this way. And, and while uh, he was really craving nicotine, uh, and when we thirst, we thirst for water, I do think that all of our cravings point to the God-shaped hole in our hearts that when we're hungry, our spirit, there is a sense in which all of our hungers point to our spiritual hunger. And that's what Jesus talks about in a kind of a wide-ranging scripture passage, John chapter 6, that we're going to look at today. So uh, we're going to begin reading in John chapter 6, verse 1. Hear the word of God. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near, and when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for all these people? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, six months of wages would not be enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, Well, here's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. And now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they all sat down about 5,000 in all, and then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the signs he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into our world. The next day, we're skipping to verse 22. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not gone in the boat with his disciples, but, but that his disciples had gone away alone. And then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. And so when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they came to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. And we're going to skip ahead to verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me 
will never be thirsty. May God bless this reading of scripture. Let us pray. Gracious God, uh, may the words that I speak and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So our scripture starts with a bunch of hungry people. Everybody's hungry. This is the human condition. Everybody has a hungry heart. And th the ways that we try to slack our hunger are sometimes misdirected. I was uh, reading uh, how during the pandemic, people de dealt with the stress of it and the hunger for human connection of normal so social activities. And they, they ate and they drank a lot more. I mean, they drank a lot more alcohol and they ate a lot more food. And Americans gained, at least half of all Americans report that they gained weight. Experts call the result the quarantine 15. Everybody has a hungry heart. And how we slack our hunger is sometimes misdirected. Jesus asked Philip where they could purchase bread to feed all this huge crowd. And Philip basically says it can't be done. And then Andrew comes and says, there's this boy here. He's got uh, two fish and five barley loaves. The barley's critically important because it signals something uh, really important that we might miss. Uh, the wealthy people in Jesus' day ate wheat. The poor people ate barley. It's not as refined, a lot higher in fiber. We probably think it's healthy today. Pay extra for it, right? But in that in Jesus' day, everybody preferred the wheat. In fact, first century philosopher, Jewish philosopher, a guy named Philo of Alexandria once said, barley is a food that is concerned, consumed by irrational animals and the poor alike. Well, the crowd that gathered around Jesus is poor, and the poor, as you may know, have a special place in God's heart. As we see in this, Jesus' fourth sign, the feeding of the 5,000. The next day, all the people are looking for Jesus. And uh, he's removed himself, we didn't read this part, but he's removed himself because he's fearful that they will try to make him king by force. And when the crowd doesn't find him, they look around and they finally track him down to Capernaum in Galilee. This is kind of, you know, the center of his ministry. And, and there they find him. And when they find him, Jesus says, you're looking for me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life. Now, it's after this that Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Now, like the other metaphors uh, we've been looking at in this sermon series, you know, being born from above or born again or uh, living water, uh, bread is a metaphor for the spiritual hunger of, that we have. And uh, Jesus is saying that he feeds our true hunger. He nourishes a true life, a spiritual life, what he calls eternal life. And Jesus' teaching and example feeds us in a number of ways. His teaching and example feed us by showing us the dynamics of a spiritual life. He feeds us by showing the distinctive shape of this life. And this helps us to follow in a way to have a true life. Jesus feeds us uh, through his work on the cross, which shows us that God is with those who are forsaken, that we're never forsaken. And he feeds us by showing us that our sin does not separate us from the love of God. Jesus' resurrection feeds us by giving us hope in the face of despair and security in the face of raging evil or the frightening power of death. Jesus is God's bread. And as we feed on him, we find strength for the life that he gives. You know, Sarah Miles is an interesting person that you might want to look up. She's written a number of books. Uh, she was raised by parents who were the children of missionaries and preachers, and they both kind of had very difficult experiences that kind of turned them off to all Christian faith. In fact, they were hostile to faith, and they would regularly kind of belittle people who believed, and they taught Sarah to know better. As an adult, uh, Sarah uh, did a lot of uh, work working for human rights. She, did some work in uh, Central and, and South America. She, she w wrote articles for The New Yorker. She became an editor of Mother Jones. 
And then one day, for no particular reason, she says that she wandered into a church that she kept passing on her daily route. She kind of wandered in. Chairs were arranged around a table in a soaring space. And she took a seat among a small group that was gathered there. And there was singing and reading and standing up and sitting down. And all of it was very foreign to her because her parents had not raised her with any idea about Christian faith. And then uh, someone placed a piece of crumbly bread in her hands and said, this is the body of Christ. And here's how she describes the unexpected and kind of terrifying thing that happened next. She says, Jesus happened to me. That impossible word, Jesus, lodged in me like a crumb. I had no idea what it meant. I didn't know what to do with it. But it was realer than any thought of mine, and the word was indisputably in my body now, as if I'd swallowed some sort of radioactive pellet that would outlive all my flesh. The mysterious sacrament turned out not to be symbolic wafer, but actual food, indeed, the bread of life. Sarah talks about how that meal changed her life, and she developed a deep relationship with Christ, and she found a calling to work in that church's ministry, to feed the poor. In fact, one of the interesting things that she did is the church would hand out food to people, and she, they would hand out food in their fellowship hall, and she convinced them to move it into the sanctuary. And so they began handing out food from that very table, the communion table. They handed out food to people as an, to, to show them and to show themselves and be reminded of themselves that this is in response to the way we've been fed at this table. And also to show that what they were doing was an extension of, of the feeding that they received at that table. And finally, to remind them all that Jesus is the bread of life. By serving daily bread, Sarah came to know Jesus as the very bread of life. And she says that this brought meaning and coherence to her life. In fact, she wrote this in her book called Take and Eat. She says, at the heart of Christianity is a power that continues to speak to and transform us. I hear a voice that can crack religious and con political convictions wide open. It advocates for the least qualified and the least official and the least likely. It upsets the established order. It makes a joke of certainty. It proclaims against reason that the hungry will be fed and those who are cast down will be lifted up and all things, including my own failures, are being made new. It offers food without exception to the worthy and to the unworthy, the screwed up and the pious, and then commands everyone to do the same. Christ is the bread of life. Do not go around hungry. Amen. Let us pray. Uh, gracious God, Feed us on Christ, particularly in those places where we are hungry today. If we hunger for security, remind us that our lives are held in you. If we are thirsty for meaning, give us a purpose. If we're craving a connection, connect us with your love. If we are seeking wisdom, give us your guidance. And all of us bring to life that eternal life that is fed by the bread of heaven, even the one who is the bread of life. Amen. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning. Uh, I hope that this uh, has been meaningful for you and. Uh, if you are visiting with us, we have folks that are right around the corner from our church who watch us online, and we've got folks in other cities and other states and other countries who watch us. And um, we're, we're really uh, grateful for your time. We're also grateful for those of you who uh, feel called to support this ministry uh, without your help. We could not do any of this. Uh, we invite you to share 
uh, this on social media. Uh, share it with your friends so that we can spread the word. And uh, finally, uh, know that we look forward uh, to uh, supply chain problems being cleared up and, and uh, being able to expand what we're offering online. Uh, we're kind of excited about some things that may be coming down in the future, uh, assuming that these things actually show up so they can be installed. But anyway, uh, until that day, uh, we'll continue worshiping this way, and we sure do appreciate your time and your attention. And now, may God bless you and keep you. May uh, the Lord grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen.